and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can set up a free slider and then affect some sort of output and set up a step slider and again, set up different output based on the step that you are at. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. So in the scene, we have this simple slider set up. I'll just run through the game objects that make it up. Inside the slider, we have this slider output, which we'll come back to in a minute. We've got the slider bar, which just represents where we can slide our main slider control up. And then we've got five different colored steps. We've got a blue, a purple, an orange, a yellow, and a red. And what we're gonna do is whenever the slider moves to one of those steps, we're gonna change our output to that color. And then finally, we've got the slider control, this green block, which is what we're gonna be able to grab and move up and down the slide bar. So to start with, let's turn our slider control into a linear drive. So window, Tilia, interactions, controllable creator, and then we can choose whether we want the linear joint drive or the transform drive. Again, I'm just gonna pick transform drive and click convert, and then we can close the controllable creator window down, and we can see that's transformed that into the linear transform drive prefab. And with the linear transform drive prefab selected, we need to update our linear drive facade to suit. So we can see our axis direction is correct. It's going down our X axis, which is what we want, but we can see the limits are quite far. So let's reduce our drive limit from one down to 0 0.5. And now we can see with those gizmos showing us our end limit is over on the blue and our other end limit is over on the red, which is what we want. And then the next thing we want to do is set up our step settings again. So we've got five steps here. We've got the blue, the purple, the orange, the yellow, and the red. So zero, one, two, three, four. So we're going from zero to four. So zero is the minimum, four is the maximum. Our step increment is still set to one. And again, we're gonna do snap to step on release. So when we release it, it will automatically snap to that relevant step. And we can increase the drive speed so that snapping is quicker as well. I'll put in a hundred here. By default, the drive will start halfway through. So we can just leave the start at initial value set to off because we want it to start at this central point, which will make our slider output orange by default, as this is the orange one under here. If we turn this off, we can see there's an orange one under there. And there we go. We've set up our slider control now. So let's set up some logic. So when it moves to these different step locations, we change the color of our slider output. We're going to do this simply by creating a game object that holds some of our logic. So if I create an empty game object, and I'm going to call this step zero logic and basically what we want to happen here is when our step value is zero we want some logic to happen that sets this to the same color as our step so this slider output becomes blue we can do that easily by using a float to boolean because the step value is a float so if we add a float to boolean component and the positive bounds will be a minimum of zero and a maximum of zero because we only care about if this value is zero and then what we need here is a Boolean action, something when this is true and something when this is false. So add another component of Boolean action. And then in our float to Boolean logic on the transformed, all we need to do is add a new listener, put the Boolean action into there. And in the function on the Boolean action, just make sure we select the dynamic ball receive. And now when this Boolean becomes true, all we're going to do is in its activated event, we're gonna add another listener, put our slider output into there and then look down onto the mesh renderer and we're just gonna change its material color. But the material color needs to go to blue. And all we need to do is copy this for the other colors. So let's make four more copies. And now we have four copies, one for step one, one for step two, one for step three, and one for step four. So if we look at our step one logic, this would be the purple step. We want our positive bounds to be true if that value is now one. So a minimum of one and a maximum of one. And then instead of changing it to blue, we want to change it to purple. So we drag and drop purple. And we just do that for each of these steps now. So step two would be two and two, and that would go to orange. So we drag and drop the orange. Step three would be yellow. We can do this either way around. We can drag and drop the yellow and then change these to three. And finally, step four would go to red. So we can set that to red and make sure these are set to four. Now, all we need to do is update our linear drive facade events to change the step value change event, and we're gonna add some listeners in here. We want one for each of our step values. And then we're just gonna say step zero, step one, step two, step three, and step four. And then all we need to do in each one of these is call the float to Boolean transform. And when they're all set up, what this is going to do is whenever that step value changes between zero and four, it will run the logic on these. And if the step value is zero, this will become true. And it will set our sphere to blue. And if the step value is one, 
this one will become true and then it will set it to purple and so on so that's how we've set up a very simple step slide controller where we can drag it between these specific indents on our slide bar and then affect the output in some way before we run the scene what we're going to do is see how we can make it so we've got a continuous slider working as well and instead of just using simple components we're going to do a little bit of coding to show we can use code if we want so to do this i'm simply just going to copy and paste this slider game object and we're going to drag this forward a little bit and probably move it over to the right a little bit and we'll expand this one and collapse that one and then i'll move the slider output over to the right and in this one we don't need any slide steps so i'm going to delete all the slide steps and we also don't need any of this logic so i'm going to delete that logic and then in our drive control we don't need any of these step values now as you can see they're missing because i've deleted the logic so we'll delete all these as well and we're not actually interested in the step range things now so i'm going to untick the snap to step on release because we don't want that to occur now and what we're going to have here is when we move this up and down this bar we're actually going to change the opacity of this object instead and for this we're going to have this bar start at one direction so we'll have it start at the initial target value of one and we can click align to initial target value so we can see that set up in the scene this is where it will start and then when we grab it and drag it we're going to change the opacity of this game object so let's create a little script to do that for us if you've never created a c-sharp script in unity before it's pretty straightforward just down on your project settings you just need to right click go to create and then go to c sharp script and then give it a name and we're just going to call this opacity changer and when that script is created you can just double click it to open it in the editor of your choice i'll be using visual studio and when your editor has opened you'll see we get some boilerplate code we don't need a lot of this so i can delete these top two lines and then we're not going to need these two methods in here either so we can delete those and all i'm going to do now is create a public reference to the mesh renderer on that game object so we can change its material color so all i need to do is create a new public field that points to that mesh renderer and we can do that by just typing public mesh renderer and then giving our field a name so i'll just call it mesh renderer and in a moment you'll see that this field becomes available for us in the editor to be able to drop our game object into it then the next thing we need is just some code that lets us change the opacity on the color that that mesh renderer has so we're going to create another method just called change opacity that we pass in a float value to so another public method that doesn't return anything so it will have the keyword void and we're just going to call it change opacity with the parameter which is a float called value and there we can see we've got our method it's a public method it doesn't return anything so it says void we've called it change opacity and it receives a float value now what we want to do in here is take the existing color off our mesh and then we want to change its alpha value based on that value that's passed in and then we want to set that back onto the mesh so it's very straightforward we just need a reference to a color so we've created a variable called current color that is of color type and we're just going to get a reference now to the color that's stored on the material in the mesh renderer and we can see here we're calling our mesh renderer that we're going to pass in we're getting its material and then we're getting its color and the next thing we want to do is just change the alpha level on that color so we can do that simply by just saying current color dot a which is alpha property and then just set that to value and now finally all we want to do is set our mesh renderer to that new color so it's almost the same as that first line just flipped around we're just saying the mesh renderer's materials color is now current color and there we go the mesh renderer's material color is the current color which the current color is the current mesh renderer color we've changed that alpha value on it and that's all we need to do that's all the code there is so we need to save that and then if we go back to unity we can add this opacity change component to our slider output and then in our drive control now what we can do is instead of changing the step value we can just use a normalized value because that will go from zero to one and that's all the opacity will be between is zero and one so if we go to the normalized value add another listener in here put our slider output on there and then if we look down to our opacity changer we should have the dynamic float change opacity method which we just defined and now the final thing we need to do is on our slider output we just need to make sure we've set our mesh renderer to the mesh renderer of the seer and there we go we've now set up two sliders this slider when we slide this forward and backwards will change the opacity of this seer and when we move this slider up and down it will change the color of this seer so let's jump into the scene and see that working so now we're in the scene we can see if we grab this slider and we drag it up and down we can see that our sphere there the opacity is changing on it based on that code that we wrote and then over on this one 
we can see it's orange by default and if we grab it and drag it between the different steps we can see we're changing that color based on that logic that we set and there we go we've set up two sliders that work in a stepped way and in a free slide way one using code and one with no code i hope this video has been useful to you if it has please consider subscribing to the youtube channel leave any likes dislikes comments down below please consider becoming a vrtk patron and i'll see you for the next video thanks for watching and bye for now